It's been 18 years since Miami joined the conference, and they haven't won it, at least not yet. Is it finally time for the Canes to win the ACC? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alum, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, including pregame and postgame on the Miami Hurricanes radio network. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts, so make sure to subscribe. And we are also available free on YouTube, so make sure to hit that thumbs up button. So we're talking futures. We're talking betting odds. We're talking where Miami fits in the landscape of the Atlantic Coast Conference and in the landscape of college football. And guys, with so many of the odds coming out there, the win total, the ACC odds, even Heisman Trophy odds, where our guy Tyler Van Dyke makes a cameo in those, I thought who better to break it down with us than our special guest for today. And he's a friend of mine, and I want him to be a friend of this program as well, because for my Hurricanes listeners, if you're not aware of the work that Lee Sterling is doing at ParamountSports.com, and he's also the host of Locked On Bets. So he's part of the Locked On Podcast family, and he's also a South Florida-based uh, handicapper who does support the Miami Hurricanes. So this is this is a dream guest for us. Lee Sterling, Locked On Bets. How you doing, sir? Love the intro. Well, I'm going to even make it even better. I don't even think you knew about a couple of these things. So growing up, uh, my father was one of the team dentists with Dr. Mariani for over oh, 25 years. In I fact, we were going that. through his house. We're selling my house. My dad no longer alive, but um, selling him. We're moving my mom. It's a long story to a, an assisted living facility. Ran across this weekend uh, one of the jackets he wore on the sideline, University of Miami with Dr. Sterling on it. So wow. that's something maybe I'll wear that if I come back on your show. So I've been on the sidelines from when I was a little boy. Uh, back to when the Dolphins not only played in the Orange Bowl, in fact, they used to play on Friday nights in the early 70s. And they used to be on the north side on Friday night games. They used to cross cross with the the opposing team and go into the home locker room and be on the north side. My dad was actually, I, I don't know if he was the first, he was one of the first two or three. He developed individual mouthpieces. I don't know if you were really remember playing football. You used to put, you know, those that you first of all, you, when I was starting to play, I'm 59, used a rubber mouthpiece. Then you use one of those that you dipped into hot water. The boil and bite ones. That's right. what I used. Well, yeah. So even this is going back to the early seventies. He and, and another dentist developed where they could do individual mouthpieces. They had molds. They had uh, molds for each player. They kept it in their locker and they had small, thin mouthpieces, you know, about the mouthpieces you see that that they wear today. Each player on the team was fitted when they came in with two mouthpieces for the season. And their original thought was to help quarterbacks out so they yeah. could call the signals better. Yeah. So um, uh, I got my master's degree from the University of Miami. My daughter was a cheerleader, graduated three years ago. So I'm I'm deeply rooted into the Miami Hurricanes. I think I know them real well, uh, but I'll also be honest. I've gone against them uh. early and often, uh, <laughs> you know, since, you know, the that one great season Larry Coker had. It was a slow decline and couldn't find the right coach. But um, I think they finally found the right guy. Yeah. Is everything going to all of a sudden be perfect? No. The talent isn't quite there yet, but I think it's going to be a fun ride now. So I'm looking at the the futures for the ACC. And of course, I know a lot of our listeners, you know, have already take advantage of these odds at betonline.net. Some people have already wagered on it. Others are kind of waiting to see how it shakes out more towards fall camp. Clemson are 
sizable favorites to win the conference. So, you know, they they dipped last year. Uh, the odds makers are expecting them to come right back up to the top. They're minus 140 favorites. The University of Miami, though, do have the next best odds to win the conference at plus 500. Then NC State at plus 850. Uh, then you get back into the coastal with Pittsburgh at plus 1,000. North Carolina at plus 1,200. So first of all, Lee, uh, do we agree with the story that the odds tell there, starting in the Coastal Division? Do you agree that Pittsburgh is Miami's biggest threat in the Coastal, or do you think it's UNC who's had Miami's number in recent years? The craziest thing about UNC, and this happens every year, there's one or two teams where a particular unit, I'm talking about, let's say, the offensive line or a particular player just doesn't play up to their potential. North Carolina was returning every single offensive lineman last wow. year from a season where they were setting records, and they were awful. It, it was the craziest thing. It made no sense at all. Look up the numbers. Now, they had new running back. They had new receivers, but the offensive line was intact. They couldn't protect the quarterback. They couldn't run the football. I think they'll do much better. I think they're recruiting better. I think the bloom is off Clemson. I mean, there is. Really? They're not recruiting the way they used to. They don't have a quarterback um, on their roster, I believe. So, so I mean, you, you don't think you don't we, think Weungalele, who looked like two years ago, he looked really good in relief yeah. of Trevor Lawrence, not so good last year. So you think he's not that great? No, and I made a mistake. Wow. I'm the first to tell you I thought he was going to be really good. You watched that Me Notre too. Dame game two years ago; he looked great. But uh, just one of those cases. Maybe they didn't know what he was he was going to do and had didn't have the book on him and. I, I don't know why he failed. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but you see a whole body of work and he's not there. The best bet of all the bets we're going to talk about is Miami plus 500 to win the conference because yes. I, I don't think it's great. It's it's similar to baseball this year. There are going to be a lot of pretty good to good teams, but Pittsburgh, I mean, they lost their star receiver. Yeah, they get Kendon Slovis. Yeah, back. Okay. They're going to get him from USC. He could be good. But uh, their talent level is not where Miami's is. And they and, lost their uh, quarterback from last year, too, who's in the NFL right. now. I mean, I mean, he was everything to them. So uh, these other teams, even though Miami isn't quite where we want to be, I think their talent level, except for a few positions, is going to be good enough to win it. Um, so I like where we're headed. Uh, the only bet I've made of all that we've talked about and are going to talk about is going to be Ooh. Miami plus. I actually got them plus 520 to win the conference. I think they can do it. Well, and isn't isn't that another indicator when you see the more money comes in, the more the line shrinks? Because I can even, and it might have been a different sports book when it first came out, but I'm going by the betonline.net odds here where it's Miami plus 500. But you're right. I think the number was bigger to yep. open. And then is that a good sign when clearly more money is coming in on Miami? Sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's sharps right away. Uh -huh. Usually if it's right away, it's sharps. Uh, are betting it, but then sometimes it's the public. So, um, you know, the mm -hmm. public, you know, they hear news, a, a, a certain player transfers in or player transfers out. So I think part of the reason is the the lines also shrunk a little bit. It was Addison's going to USC. So yeah. uh, could be part of it. Okay. So, and, and I want to, uh, and I want your take on this as well. Like, and again, I'm not, and, and I like at plus 500. I like that bet. I'm glad you love that bet. So that makes me like it even more. And if I'm going to make the case for Miami winning the ACC conference this year, if I'm going to make that case, I would say you look at the coaching staff, you look at the quarterback and right. you look at the conference, right? I mean, you know, you, you've got one of it's one a bipolar. Thing. Yeah, go ahead. One other thing. Okay, so when I handicap games, and most people don't look at this, in the NFL, you look at quarterback, you look at left tackle, you look at pass rushers. Those mm -hmm. are the those are the four most important players. In college football, the four most important players, in my opinion, are quarterback number one, center number two, because uh -huh. he makes all the line calls, not left tackle. And defensive tackles. Think about when Miami was yeah. great. Okay, yeah. they had great quarterbacks. They had the Bernie Kosars, Steve Walsh's, uh, Doris, Ken Dorsey. But they also had good centers and defensive tackles. Why are defensive tackles so important? Well, if you have two really good defensive tackles, you can't run the football against them, 
and they collapse the pocket. You can have average defensive ends, and they're not going to be able to double the guys, chip the guys. They're using those running backs and guys inside uh, to to try to give the quarterback a few extra, you know, split seconds to throw the football. That's that's really good breakdown. And we're going to get a couple more breakdowns when we come back. And this is one, again, for those of you out there itching to get hyped about the 2022 season coming up and you're itching with, you know, what do I do with some of these bets? Oh, man, I want to take a look at that win total because I feel like I see an opportunity with the win total. How many are the Miami Hurricanes going to win this coming season? Before we get to that, folks, I want to talk about Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible now for, to go to your local auto chain parts store uh, to find all the parts that you need in stock. Like it, just, it doesn't happen. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? Like, I don't know, man. And then you have to wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry. Well, you have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and even in your pocket. Here's the important things, guys, and it's why I have become, when I need parts, and my car's getting older, so I need parts every now and then. I become addicted to Rock Auto because they save you time and money. Those are both very important. Why would you choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? For example, if you've got that Honda Odyssey, you're looking for a new fuel pump, that's going to cost you $353 from a chain store, only $216 from Rock Auto. You see the difference? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. They have everything you could need, even brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpets. I've had to replace my floor mats at uh, from rockauto.com. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure you write in Locked On Canes on their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. So write in Locked On Canes and you go to rockauto.com. You get that amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. I am Alex Dono, your host, alongside our special guest, award-winning handicapper Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com, also the co-host of Locked On Bets right here on the Locked On Podcast Networks, your team every day. So, Lee, uh, what am I missing here with this win total? It's over under eight and a half wins for Miami. And I know they were just seven wins last season. That was 70 wins under Manny Diaz and his staff. Uh, sorry, seven wins. That was seven wins under Manny Diaz and his staff. Seven wins where, you know, Tyler Van Dyke didn't start the whole season and he got going the second half of the season. So I look at an over under of eight and a half. And I, I think that, you know, with the transfer players that they brought in, with the improvements to the coaching staff, second year, full year of Tyler Van Dyke, I think this team can win nine games or even 10 games. Like, so I look at eight and a half for the win total. I'm smashing the over. Do you feel otherwise? I'm not smashing it. Uh, oh. Let me give you a what I look at in college totals. First of all, I think they're tougher than the NFL and I'm not underestimating the coaching change. I think we've got now a top three coaching staff, but it's still the first year under this coaching staff. Um, Mary Cristobal can recruit mm -hmm. probably top five recruiter in the country as far as the head coach, but not a great, great game day coach. I mean, yeah. let's look at his first year at Oregon. They believe he was playing. I forget the team he was playing, uh, but there was two minutes left to go on the clock, and they had a first down. He could have run the ball. Actually, not run the ball. He could have taken the knee three times, and they would have uh, won the game. Uh. And he ran the ball, and they, the player fumbled. They lose the game. So he's not perfect. I think he's probably somewhere in the range of a, a Butch Davis as far as uh, game management, things like that. I think he will get better, but they got to play at Texas A&M. They got to play at Clemson. Uh, both those games are going to be a touchdown probably or more underdog. And if that's the case, 
let's say they lose those two games, they're going to blow at least one game somewhere. I mean, yeah, they're not exactly. quite there yet. They have some weak positions, like linebacking position. I, I felt last year they were bottom three in the country. They were number they one, were. I believe, in missed tackles. They had linebackers starting. Two out of three of their linebackers, they would have had trouble starting in the junior college. They were that. <laughs> I'm being and, and, and I think just, but just saying on linebacker for a second, and I, I agree with yeah. you. It was not very good last year. And even, like, for what it's worth, if you really watch even the spring game in April with a fine-tooth comb, you could see a lot of gaps in that area of the field. Um, I, I think for me, like, if I'm going to make the – and I don't think they're going to have, like, the best linebacking group in the country, but – I could say Charlie Strong is a right. very good teacher. Right. Uh, I think Kevin Steele, their defensive coordinator, is a guy who really emphasizes proper tackling. And I also think getting Caleb Johnson in the transfer portal, I think, is going to have a nice impact. So it's like I think I think their linebacking core can improve from like bad to mediocre. That 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 would be a real good observation and <laughs> prognostication. So I just think that they're I haven't pegged to win nine games. Okay. I'm looking usually to try to get an edge, get at least one to one and a half uh, wins, plus or minus, if I'm going to play a college total. Where's the NFL? I'll play five or six win totals. College, there's 130 teams. I'll play maybe three. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to stay away from it um, just because I think they'll blow a game. And who knows? You could have a game where it's pouring rain. Um, mm -hmm. We could lose – Van Dyke or just have a, a game where it's just a bunch of turnovers. So not that the ACC is great. I haven't pegged at nine wins, so slight lean to the over. Okay, so here, here's another thing that I want to take a look at. And I, I view this one. I mean, listen, if there are folks out there that think, hey, you have enough, sprinkle a few dollars on this, get big return. If you hit it like a lottery ticket, that's fine. Uh, I look at this more for fun just to kind of see the way Tyler Van Dyke is perceived among some of the other most highly touted players in the country. So TVD, you do see him when you look at Heisman Trophy futures. He's tied for the 11th best odds to win the Heisman, according to uh, Bet Online, at plus 3,300. So 33 to 1 odds. He's in a, a three-way tie in that group at 11th with uh, Will Levis and fellow ACC quarterback, DJ Wianga Lele, and let, let me take a look at the uh, the bigger list just so folks know who the favorites are. CJ Stroud, uh, big favorite at plus 275. Bryce Young, plus 600. Caleb Williams, plus 900. So th those are the guys you're looking at that they're expecting to be in that ceremony uh, in New York at the end of the season. So uh, Lee Sterling, TVD at plus 3,300 in that kind of top 11 like what does that say about the expectation for tvd and is there a chance he could end up on the short list at the end of the year oh absolutely but he, they're gonna have to beat texas a&m in that yeah. third game he's yeah. gonna have to win that game he wins that game he throws for 350 400 yards he's top three right there but the mm -hmm. problem is miami has to win 10 plus games probably 11 for him to have a chance i think it's worth a pizza bet the guys that are in the range where he is you know, I think he's the best value because, like I said, if they beat A&M, all of a sudden he, they shoot right up and they could be 7-0, and 8-0 at, at some point, and then he's got a shot if he throws for some ridiculous numbers. But I think the offensive line is going to be improved. I think they're going to run more. I don't think they're going to have to rely on the pass as much as they have in the past. And, you know, bottom line is they're not Alabama. Uh, you know, they're not Oklahoma. Uh, so those guys are probably going to – those teams are going to win more games. So, yeah, for a pizza bet, you know, 20, 30 bucks, give it a shot. But uh, I wouldn't put anything more than that on it. Listen, and, and 20, 30 bucks, if you do end up winning, that's you know, right. a nice chuck and change to hit your account at the end of the, Oh, I forgot I placed that bet. And here right. we go. There's a bunch of money now in my account. So I, I like that a lot. All right. So uh, when we come back, we still have a lot to get to, guys. So we do have kind of just thrown out there, I think, to tease us late last week. We've got betting odds, lines for three of, I would argue, probably the three biggest games that Miami is going to play this coming season. And it does include that Texas A&M game that Lee Sterling referenced, where if Miami does win that game, 
they're on that national map, right? Week three, you go to College Station. You beat one of the most talked about teams in America. You are on that map. Before we talk about that, let's talk about betonline.net. What a perfect episode to talk about BetOnline. Guys, we've been giving you their numbers all episode long. It's time to check out BetOnline and see what else you can find. They continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights. They got a lot of good UFC content on there. I'm into that. And even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day. Available free wherever you get your podcasts. Available free on YouTube. Uh, I'm Alex Dotto, your host, joined by Lee Sterling from Locked on Bets. So uh, we, we had these uh, hit uh, hit the uh, the betting sphere last week, Lee. Uh, we've got the line for Miami at Texas A&M September 17th. A line for Miami home against Florida State on November 5th and at Clemson on November 19th. The Hurricanes are a plus eight dog at Texas A&M. Now, disclaimer, for all these numbers, of course, none of these are week one odds. These are all going to change throughout the season, but I think these odds give us an idea about where they think Miami stacks up against the competition. So let's start, Lee, with the ones where Miami are underdogs there. Plus eight at Texas A&M, plus seven and a half against Clemson. Do those numbers match up with your expectation? Okay, so first off, I think the number of Texas A&M is going to close probably in the six and a half to probably seven range. I had to to make make a guess. So if you like Miami like I do a little right now, play them plus eight. And I could see, you know, Miami down by four, seven, eight, ten points late in the game and, you know, having to battle back. I think the the worst matchup for Miami of the the big games is A&M because I think their big offensive front, and their strong front seven on defense is going to pose some problems to Miami because we're not there yet. So if they're able to lean on us, and I think they're going to run the ball, and they've got three quarterbacks they're deciding from that are pretty darn good and underrated. So uh, I think that's the toughest matchup. If if I'm Mario, I, I don't show much at all the first two games and maybe try a few trick plays. That's a game you got to let it all hang out. Uh, so uh, they're not going to know exactly what we're going to do as far as on offense. They haven't seen, you know, much at all. So I think we'll have the advantage as far as that's concerned. Jimbo is a really good play caller. We know that from back yeah. in the day when we played Florida State, he would show something in the first half, and they thought that defense, we were going to see that a certain play the second half, and then he would show something off that fake, that running play. where it was Usually a, Dalvin a, Cook. Yeah, Dalvin Cook, you know, <laughs> faking to him one way, throwing back the other way uh, to someone else or him down the sideline for a touchdown. So uh, I think that's the line you want to get on right now if you're going to play Miami. I think the Clemson line is going to come down. I think that's a line you probably want to play now also. I think mm-hmm. that line could end up being a line of three or four. So you want to play that now also. I think we match up better. Defensive line for Clemson is really good. They might have the number one defensive line in the country, but our offensive line could be uh, so much improved where they could be able to hold them in check a little bit. So uh, I think you play those those lines now if you like Miami like I do. So in Miami, um, home against Florida State November 5th, and of course Florida State did beat Miami last year. I always have to say that because yeah. we have – there's always some FSU fans who listen just so they like can try to catch me being too cocky and they'll hit me in the car. You forgot to mention Florida state. Yeah. yeah, You guys beat us last year, but for next year, Miami nine and a half point favorites at home against Florida state. Wow. Lee. So it, uh, it it doesn't sound like they think FSU is going to be too competitive at hard rock stadium in November. I think they will be improved. Now I have to deal with the next door neighbor who has a, uh, in his papers and in front of his house, an FSU, uh, a brick there. He's got a flag besides the United States of America, United States. <laughs> he's got a Florida state flag that he flies and he was all excited last year. The worst thing that ever happened to Florida state last year was them winning the game against Miami. That's what I believe. Miami could go yeah. on a run seven of the last eight, next eight years where they win that game. 
And I think it sealed Manny Diaz's fate. In fact, he was down at Belen yesterday recruiting. He can have all our scraps now. So uh, <laughs> I think that's all he's going to end up with in Penn State, all the crappy weather that they had. So oh um, I, would, I wouldn't play that game. It's a rivalry game. If anything, yeah. I would favor Florida State nine and a half points. I think it's probably going to be in the eight to ten range. But uh, Florida State game, uh, you throw out the records, you know, it's a rivalry game. So uh, that's the way I look at that game. So you can listen to this man every single day, along with your boy Q on the Locked On Bets podcast. I had the privilege of filling in for Q for a few days when he was on vacation, uh, and I had an awesome time. Uh, Lee Sterling is with us. And also tell people what they can find at your website, ParamountSports.com. So why don't we reconvene? Why don't we do this in, in mid-August after the Canes have been in fall camp for, you know, let's say 10 days to two weeks. We'll, we'll go over some of these wagers. And I'll also hand uh, the listeners out there to follow the podcast, Locked on Canes. I'll give them some maybe my top two or three college football win totals there at that time. Because awesome. starting this week, I'm going to start going over every team's college spring game. You know, it, it's the yeah, you got to figure out who's going where. So I really spend once we get to the NBA finals, I'll spend pretty much uh, a day or at least half of a day on every single team. I'll watch their best game from last year, a game where they struggled mightily and a game uh, somewhere in the middle. They played maybe a conference opponent. It was decided by seven points and I'll grade out each player. So I'll have a better idea then. Um, just check out my website, uh, ParamountSports.com. Do football probably over the last decade no one top five in the country at least in the country as far as my winning record in college football in the nfl we do basketball we're in the middle of the nba uh, uh conference finals right now hockey uh number one in the world last year in hockey uh ufc and also even uh uf uh usfl and also baseball so we do it all well winning records in every single sport ParamountSports.com, or you can always call me here at the office, 800-400-9741. That's beautiful. And everybody in the Locked On Canes fam, make sure you follow Lee on Twitter as well at Paramount Sports. And guys, make sure you spread the word. The show is growing so fast. If you've got Canes friends in your life, even Florida State fans who want to hate listen to us, let them know Locked On Canes. We're giving you Canes football content every single day apple podcast spotify odyssey wherever you get your pods also available uh, on youtube as well the youtube channel is growing really really fast so thank you so much for making locked on canes your first listen today now make your second listen the locked on nba big board podcast Raphael barlow richard stamen sam ferris and leif tulin give fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects the latest player rankings and of course big boards follow locked on nba big board every day on the odyssey app youtube and wherever you get your podcast, We will talk to you guys tomorrow on another Locked on Canes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.